What you're seeing happen over in um, Russia is uh, is the Great Reset, and people may cheer for it and say, "Look, they can't even watch the opening of Batman this weekend." Um, yeah, uh, but this has never happened before in history, and it's not because the you know Biden administration cobbled all these people together. This is the Great Reset. This is all of these companies deciding that they want to have a high ESG score. And so that's what they're doing. And they are collapsing the economy uh, of Russia. Unfortunately, because we are um, foolish and we don't, we don't look beyond the next step, we are uh, collapsing ourself as well. We cannot cut off Russian oil without us opening up our own, not oil reserves, open up our own oil production. We could provide the world with the energy that it needs or a good portion of it, but we won't do it because of global warming. So we're going to these crazy places. And their excuse for this, basically, if you're going to take the best face of the administration, their position on this is we're going to Iran, we're going to Venezuela, Because we want to limit the damage of whatever is going to happen in Russia. So we need more production. And the reason we don't open it up here is because we don't want this to be a long-term play for more fossil fuel use. We want this to be a short-term price control on the market where we can help the market in 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 this short time when this war is going on and we have all these disruptions. But we don't want to depend for a long period of time on fossil fuels because we think the existential threat, of course, of all of our civilizations is is global warming. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, though, that you would go to fossil fuels from Russia, which its oil is dirtier than ours um, and has, you know, much worse uh, effect on the climate as you're refining it. It wouldn't make sense that you would go to Iran and Venezuela. Why would you go? Because now your social justice goes off the charts. You're going to go fund a country that is throws homosexuals off the roofs of buildings? You're, you're going to go to a socialist country that is starving its people while its leader gets rich? I don't think that's a good idea. No, but if I think their their position on that is it's temporary. Like we're not going... We're not going to... Temporarily helping any of these people... Oh, you know, you, you I'm with you on this, by the way. I'm yeah, just, I know, I know. But temporarily helping people that are throwing gay people off the roof? I don't... Well, that's what... They, I mean, it's not like Russia's much better on that topic, right? We're already buying it from Russia. Yeah. We should contract, not expand. I. It, it just... The only thing that makes sense is if you... Um, if you actually just don't want America to succeed or you don't believe that anyone is for this except a small hand gr- handful of people. And so if you give out this ground now, you'll never get it back. I think that's kind of what it is, right? At least partially. Yeah, could be. They believe that they have to do, when they have power like this, jam through every Green New Deal piece of this so, to lock us in for long-term uh, progress. So on then, that should road. you should ask. Then, are they truly representatives of the people? Of course not. Right, <laughs> right. I <laughs> mean, if you're if you're willing to collapse us for that, I mean, if you have this this view of global warming, this apocalyptic view of global warming, where you would rather give money to regimes like Iran and Venezuela. That's just completely insane. And the Elon Musk position is a much more sensible apocalyptic global warming position, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Where you say, okay, look, we have nuclear power, which is much, much safer. It is, it's the best type of power available for all of these reasons. It's, it lasts forever, basically. It's, uh, it is completely clean, emission-free, all the things both sides seem to want independence plus no emissions i mean it really does hit the sweet spot there and environmentalists have turned against this for 40 50 years it it just shows no seriousness and now we're in this position where we have to deal with these regimes or we have to violate one of these two sides either not be independent or god forbid light the planet on fire. well reason why we don't want to buy oil from russia is 
humanitarian reasons. We don't like what he's doing well, to people. Sure. So right? that's part of it. You know, yeah. we don't want to, that's how they're violating. funding this war, right? Right. Right. I, I know. But it, we weren't talking about, you know, not funding him uh, until he crossed into Ukraine. Right. And so we're all seeing the people in Ukraine and going, oh, my gosh, we have to help these people. They want to be free. Uh -huh. What about the people that marched and were jailed in Cuba? What about the people who no. were marched and jailed? Let's let's be really clear in Iran, in Venezuela, uh, you know, and in Venezuela. Uh, why didn't we see them? Uh, I, I think what the, you can't again. you can't you can't heal one place by aiding. Uh, murderers and thugs in another generally speaking though the situations you're talking about are situations in which and we have by the way very much isolated iran before this yeah uh, not now now all of a sudden we're reversing that uh but they're in country issues right the 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 message being sent to russia here in their argument their worldview is this is a line you can't cross You've crossed a line and we're, we're enforcing a line and doing everything we can to enforce that line. And if it means we have to fall back on some other promises on other things, then we, that's what we have to do. I mean, because as you know, Glenn, you're only a few months away from an election in this country in which the Democrats, if they're facing $8 a gallon gas, they're not going to do all that well. They're not going to do well with $2 a gallon gas right now. $8 a gallon gas could be the ultimate wave election that we haven't seen in a century, right? So it might make the Tea Party election look like it was nothing from 2010. If he's if we're looking at eight dollar a gallon gas and inflation through the roof, that's this exactly what they could be looking. This at. is where some people think, yeah, well, that's why they will bring things down quickly. Mm -hmm. um, because then they'll just cancel elections. If you cancel elections, that this is not going to happen. I, well, I can't say that. You can't say anything, anything that, is not going to happen anymore. Anything could happen. I just don't see that uh, happening. Um, but I do see uh, a country that is so hungry, um, that is so freaked out by everything that is, is happening, and the Democrats saying, we'll give you all these free things. Pass our Build Back Better Bill, and we'll give you all these free things. You think that could be effective? It after might be. they've overseen this entire thing happening? It might be. I mean, otherwise, why? What? I mean, it's well, it's it's Putin. It's Putin. Why? Why would you do this? This makes no sense. Why would you do this? Do well, it makes sense to somebody with Putin. Mm -hmm. Why would you do this? It doesn't. Your logic doesn't work here doesn't make sense what are you doing so your quest your answer is he's crazy or we don't understand what he thinks is rational mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the same thing here maybe with the democratic uh, democratic party i mean i don't know w why would you do this why wouldn't you open up just for nine months just hey just we're opening up during this why wouldn't you open that up it would provide relief. It would uh, create jobs. Uh, it would put us back into a position where we're leading the world, not uh, not following. And I think all of those reasons are the reasons why they're not doing it. But what is your end game? I don't know. How do you win the election? I don't know. Because there's no way. Uh, there's no. I don't. I don't. I think they're trying to hopefully minimize the harsh impact to the american people so they can not lose not only purple districts but you know light blue districts is where, where are they at. minimizing this no where I'm, are you seeing them minimizing the going to iran Ugh. going to venezuela to try to lower gas prices enough so the shock isn't as bad if we wind up losing russia because we keep talking about well we might not buy russian oil mm. what if they don't sell it to us like they, they now you're like they have that's how they're funding the war right now. So they're going to continue to do it we think for the foreseeable future. What if they decide, you know what, Europe, we're not giving you anything. We see what you're doing on our borders. We see what you're doing in this war. We see you're sending planes in there. We're not selling it to you anymore. I mean, yes, that would hurt who them. Who has whom over the barrel? I, they both got to have each other over. Yeah, I know. Everything. This is one of those situations that that people don't understand. You you we we hope that both sides walk away from the table with the gun pointed at each other saying, 
all right, we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with each other, right? Right? Because I can shoot you dead, you can shoot me dead. It's mutually assured destruction. Mad. It's just not with nuclear missiles, although it is with nuclear missiles in the end. But you know, right now we can both and we both are destroying our own economies. We are engaged in mad, in madness. We are destroying ourselves. We are destroying them. They're destroying themselves and us. It's madness. Is there anyone that is uh, an adult in the room that can stand up and go, okay, all right, okay. At least in America, if you want to do this, you have to pump your own oil and gas. You must right now. Otherwise, sit down, shut up. Sit down and shut up. We can't say we are being compassionate to Ukraine if we're destroying ourselves. Yeah, that doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help end. anyone in the end. We can't destroy ourselves, and we, we don't have to. It's easy. Just turn the pipelines back on. Just open up the spigots for the natural gas and the oil to flow, and we can help Europe. We can help, our, we can help ourselves. We can help Ukraine, and we can cripple Russia. Isn't that what we want to do? Isn't that what our plan is? Or is our plan to all of us, none of us, have anything? Just wipe everything out. That doesn't sound like a good plan. But I haven't, I haven't heard people really, have you heard people articulate this? I either hear, you know, Putin's not a bad guy or <laughs> we need to fly our planes in there and cut off his oil. Yeah, I, it's a weird time because we are, I think, correctly, morally justified in, in taking a strong position on this. We I are. think what has happened Big has time. been really, really bad. And Vladimir Putin still is mostly to blame for it. Uh, you know, this is that's not to say everyone else in the world is perfect, but this was a an unneeded escalation in our world. But I don't think that the American people have been told and ha had the full conversation on mm -hmm. what sort of ramifications are going to come from this mm -hmm. and people, I, i'm still talking to people who are like oh you know i'm not really interested it's it's over there it's, it's way over there and they're yeah, doing, not so much it's gonna affect us in a major way it obviously already is at the pumps that's just the first sign though and if this thing goes on and you know like vladimir putin's not the type of guy who's gonna say yeah you guys ruined our economy let me go back to our own borders you guys keep you know what take crimea back too that may have been a, too much of an overreach for us he's not that kind of guy He's not gonna. He's not gonna back off and say, "Ah, see, here's this is a mistake. I'm sorry." Here's the reason why Donald Trump didn't say anything uh, about Putin while they were together, okay? Uh, and Putin didn't say anything bad about Trump because at least Trump has told me at a deal, "You don't embarrass me. I won't embarrass you." Now that doesn't be on policy. That's just don't you dare target me personally, or I will target you personally. In the war of words. Yeah. You know? And people forget that Trump's policies, not words, but policies on Russia were very were strong. The strongest. Much stronger than Obama's or right. Biden's. And he also said to uh, Putin, you take Ukraine, those beautiful onion domes there in <laughs> Moscow, I blow them up. Oh, the gold turrets. Yeah. yeah they're I mean, going down. And, and that is important in a guy uh, like Vladimir Putin, you have to speak his language or he does not respect you.